can be really hard to know which rare and uncommon plants are actually worth the money. And I can speak from personal experience of going and choosing a plant. I spend a lot of money on it. It's a hard to find plant and I bring it home and I just think, oh, that definitely wasn't worth it. However, there are definitely those out there that are. So that's what I'm going to be sharing and discussing today are 10 rare or uncommon plants that I have in my personal collection that I definitely think are worth it. I would recommend adding them to your wish list if you don't already have them. They each have something a little bit unique and special about them, which you know, make them some of my favorite uncommon or rare plants. And the reason why I say uncommon instead of rare is that the houseplant market has changed so much in that a lot of these plants that maybe were considered rare not long ago are more uncommon now because they're more readily available, which is super exciting. I find it's difficult to, to find a truly rare plant nowadays um, because a lot of these plants have become so much more readily available. Now, if you're wondering who I am, this crazy plant lady, my name's Ashley, and I have a over 250 houseplants in my collection. So if you like planty stuff, definitely subscribe for episodes to show up in your newsfeed. I share videos like this, plant shopping, plant care, all that good stuff. And we also have a really great community on Instagram and TikTok. Now we not only have a lot of plant lovers in our community, but plant parents. Plant care especially can be one of the more daunting aspects of owning plants and being a plant parent, but with the help of the award-winning app Planta, our sponsor for this video, over 7 million plant parents are receiving help every week taking care of over 32 million plants. I can see why 7 million people have downloaded this app. The way it works is you add your plants, which is very easy to do just with a photograph. I have a lot of obscure and random plants and it did a fabulous job identifying them. And then it puts together an intelligent care schedule for you. This intelligent care schedule will let you know when you need to water, fertilize, mist, clean, and repot your plants. So here's today's schedule and some of the plants that need some sort of care, whether it's watering, whatever, and the different tasks. And you can just like click off on them as you take care of them. If there's something going on with your plant and you're trying to figure out what it is, you can use the Dr. Planta feature and it will diagnose it for you and give you a treatment plan. So you take some photographs and then it diagnoses this for you. Now with this plant, I knew it was from a lack of humidity and it diagnosed it as dry air and it tells you you can just increase your humidity. If you're ever out plant shopping or you're trying to figure out what kind of plant something is, you can use the plant identifying feature. Fishbone cactus. You can use the light meter feature and it will tell you how much light the plant is getting and whether it needs more or less. The app is free to download, so click the link in my description below to get started and join the Planta community today. This is not in any particular order. I love all of these plants. I just so happen to grab this one first and it's an Anthurium radicans and luxurians. And this one was so impossible to find for the longest time. And when I did find it, it was like $200. I actually managed to find this one at Big Bloomers. It's a nursery that's about two hours away from me and they always just have the most, like the best prices and the like coolest plants ever. I'm stuttering because I'm like trying to figure out how to describe that place because it's amazing. So I have wanted this plant forever, but as I said, it's been ridiculously expensive and I found this one for $34.95. And it's still an uncommon plant that you don't see around that often. It's nice to be able to share some unique uncommon plants and for them to not be really expensive. This plant is so incredibly easy care. And look how beautiful these leaves are. They have this gorgeous elongated heart shape to the leaves. They have, they're this like dark, gorgeous green color. They have quilted pillowy leaves. The stems are a gorgeous red color. Now with this one being a hybrid of radicans and luxurians, each one is gonna be a little bit different, but all the ones that I've seen look pretty much just like this. And it's just so easy. I mean, it has nice thick leaves, so it's drought tolerant. And you know, it has the darker leaves, so it's okay being away from the window a little bit. Um, or you can give it a grow light if you don't have a lot of light. But again, it's just like not a fussy plant at all, which I was really excited to, um, to see. And the other thing that's nice about this one with it being an anthurium is that it's not like crisping up at all. My other anthuriums 
they have the only thing that I do have is this little spot here which looks like some bacteria but it's had that since I brought it home from the nursery so I think that was something that happened at the greenhouse but that's really the only spot everything else is great on this plant um, and my other anthurium have like massive massive crisping from lack of humidity not this one so if you if that's something you struggle with with anthurium, this is definitely a super, super safe bet. And I just water it when it's about halfway to fully dry. It handles the type of plant parent that I am very well, which is kind of neglectful. So this is a fabulous plant that I would definitely recommend like 10 out of 10. And as I go through, definitely feel free to leave your comments, any like uncommon and rare plants that you have in your collection that you love. This one is for sure worth it. It is amazing. Next up is a really, really cool Aglionema. I'm kind of starting to get into Aglionemas and I've always loved Pictum tricolors. And this one is an Aglion Aglionema Pictum tricolor peacock. So it is a little bit different than the other Aglionema tricolors, which makes them a, a bit unique. And the difference is the elongated leaves. And I'm just... I just can't express like how obsessed I am with this plant. It has the gorgeous camouflage color that you get with the Aglionema Pictum tricolor, but it just has the long leaves, which is a little bit different. And I've had Aglionema Pictum tricolor and I no longer have it in my collection because I struggled with that plant. But this one, you know, for some reason I have not had any issues it's been doing great it sits over here and uh, it's on the second shelf here so it kind of gets light through the glass shelf that i've here these are from ikea the the shelves i get asked a lot they're all from ikea and it does get some light from the window but not much and it is happy it's putting out it's put out new leaves new growth it has like a whole other second plant here it's putting out new leaves i got this one from a place where i find good plant deals actually uh, up in michigan because i'm half my time there half my time in charlotte and i found it for 31.99 and i've seen this plant out twice in all my years plant shopping, but I have seen it out twice recently. So maybe we'll start seeing this plant on the market more. Maybe it'll become more readily available and less uncommon. So if you wanna get your, your hands on it, you can grab one because it's definitely worth it. And I'd love to see this plant like fully grown, nice and big. I'm so curious how, how large these leaves get. Again, I'm kind of stick with my same treatment, which is I water it when, when it's about halfway to fully dry. Um, and it seems to handle that just fine. It, it seems like somewhat drought tolerant, um, which the other Aglionema, the, the other Aglionema Pictum tricolor was not um, necessarily okay with that treatment. Maybe I just got unlucky with my original one, but this is just such a cool Aglionema. I can't get enough of it. Next up is this bright yellow plant and I am obsessed with it. It's a philodendron or Shawesii aurea. And I got it for $44.95, which was a really good deal on it. Um, and this plant is so cool. And it's actually still in its juvenile form. It hasn't actually fully matured yet because, and I wish it was mature form. Maybe I can find a picture and, and post it here so you can actually see what the mature leaves on the Warshawesii look like. And I have um, an adult form one in the solid green, but I've struggled with that one not with this one, and I've been somewhat neglectful of this plant, and it has been doing fine with that treatment. Um, I give it like medium light, and it seems to do just fine with that. It's been putting out tons of new growth. I water it when it's about halfway to fully dry. I was expecting it to be a little bit fussier because it does have somewhat thin leaves, and the thin leaves seem to be less drought tolerant. This plant is so awesome though, and it's just, so beautiful. It's one of those plants that really stands out amongst all my other plants. Definitely, I think the color contributes a lot to that. Even the aerial roots are lime green. The stem is lime green. This is lime green. It's just such a neat plant. I, I absolutely just love it and would recommend it. Next up is the philodendron Jose Bono. And I was not expecting to like this plant. I just didn't think it was gonna do it for me at all. Isn't that funny how that happens? Sometimes we, I don't know if you guys have this, but I'll bring a plant home and not be expecting much. And then it's always like the most random ones that surprise me that I love. 
This is a fabulous Easy Care philodendron. It is amazing. I got this at the same time as I got another plant, a Pariso Verde. They look very similar. This one, 10 out of 10, recommend over the Pariso Verde. I don't, I just, it's so nice. It doesn't require anything. It's definitely drought tolerant. It has nice thick leaves. I love that the variegation um, stays. So even if it's cold, it will keep its variegation unlike the Pariso Verde, which I got. Um, and the variegation, there's still a little bit of green. So it doesn't like turn brown like some of the white variegation does, which I really, really appreciate it. It's always putting out like new plants. And I think I got this one for around $45 and I do see this one around more often. So this was one is definitely, it's not common. It's more on the uncommon, um, but it's, if you see this one and you've been thinking about it, definitely worth it um, from somebody who was a skeptic about it. And it's growing fast. The leaves are, again, I'm kind of neglectful of my plants. Um, and this plant is like, loving that treatment. I have it uh, near the window um, and it gets medium light because the light actually shines in that direction and this is doesn't get that bright light. So it gets like about medium light and it loves it. I mean, look how huge the leaves are getting already in the short amount of time I've had it. And it's just a strong plant. Like it feels like if I knocked it over, it would be fine, you know? <laughs> and uh, I don't know what that means, but <laughs> It, this plant can handle it. I just, I just really love it. And I mean, look at this gorgeous variegated leaf. Absolutely no browning, no crisping. It does have that nice lime green color to it. Here we have um, like a somewhat half moon. Each new leaf that unfurls is like a nice little present because they all look so different, which is a lot of times exciting with variegating, variegated plants to see what the new leaves look like. And that's definitely rewarding with this one. And not just that, but each leaf seems bigger and bigger and bigger, which is awesome. And I like the shape of the leaves as well. It's just such a great philodendron and I'm so happy with it. Um, it's one of those plants that never gives me any trouble. It makes me smile. I just really, really love it. I have it in one of my slotted, um, nursery pots and it it did so well with the repotting it didn't like get stressed out like so many plants do it literally was like all right you know thanks and it's just like taken off um it's just a really great really fabulous plant so yeah the philodendron jose bono so if you like syngonium this next one's for you i've been seeing it on the market a little bit more now it's still pretty uncommon and hard to find but if you do find it i definitely recommend picking it up and it is called a syngonium panda galaxy and it wasn't expensive it was 16.99 where i found it given it's one of those places that ashley finds like the good plant deals but it has really beautiful green leaves and white spotted or light lime green spotted variegation. So it's very unusual. I haven't seen other Syngonium that look quite like this. Um, it's not, it looks different than the Syngonium Albo. I just, it has like chunky lime green variegation. Um, I love, love the shape of the leaves. The variegation is stable from what I can tell. All the new leaves have been putting out a lot of variegation. Um, you know, that's the thing with some Syngonium is they can kind of revert, but I have not noticed that with this plant at all. It seems very stable and it's so easy, like most Syngonium are, just very, very easy. It's been putting out tons of new growth since I got it. And it's just a really, really fabulous plant. There was another Syngonium too that I, I was thinking about mentioning but I feel like the variegation on that other one is not gonna be near as stable as this one. So I'm gonna see how that one does and maybe I'll mention it in another video. I personally love Syngonium. Like I wanna collect, collect all of them. Um, but yeah, this one is just so neat. Like it's it's got something kind of special to it. I love how dark the leaves are on this on the syngonium and I think it just makes the the variegation really pop and it doesn't have the crisping like on my syngonium albo it's beautiful but the white does crisp up and I don't get that with this one so yeah this is a good one to add to the wish list and I am starting to kind of see it come onto the market a little bit more syngonium panda galaxy
Now, if you like pothos, this is a great plant for you. And it is an Epipremnum or pothos amplissimum variegata. And we see the amplissimum at the big box shops, the regular amplissimum. It was released by Costa Farms at the big box shops. Not this one, but just the regular amplissimum that has the silver streaks on the leaves. Now, this is that same plant, but it has variegation. And it is such a fast grower. And normally variegated plants are slower growing. Not this one. I keep having to trim it because I don't have anything for it to climb and it's not getting enough light kind of on the bottom. But it's just putting out runner after runner after runner. And I keep pruning it back. And then what it does is it keeps putting off new shoots. And the variegation has been really nice on this one as well. Like each new leaf has gorgeous variegation. Look at this one. It's a half moon with some like gorgeous lime green. This one has like a little bit of yellow. That might be an old leaf that, you know, with winter time, but here's another one. I guess it is so pretty. Look at this little baby one down here, like trying to make it work. That poor little plant. I'm sorry, but you need to stay up here, not all the way down here. It's just a great, great um, Epipremnum. So if you're looking for a more uncommon or rare um, kind of pothos, this is one of those. I found it for $80, which I felt at the time was a steal. I was nervous to spend that much money on it because I'd never heard of anyone else having this plant or um, I didn't, like I didn't know anyone else that had this plant and it's doing like absolutely absolutely fabulous. I would definitely recommend. It looks like there's a couple leaves over here that are a little bit um, on the darker green, but there's still quite a bit of variegation happening. So a lot of that can be with cooler temperatures or, you know, maybe it needs a little bit more light. But yeah, this is definitely one of my all-time favorites. And you know what's cool is like you can trim the runners and propagate it so you can get more of the plant because I think this one's probably still relatively expensive. Um, I'm, again, I'm not seeing it so much at plant shops, so maybe online or Facebook Marketplace, but if you can get your hands on it, it's a fabulous, fabulous uh, pothos or epipremnum. If you like succulents, this next one is for you, and it is a mermaid succulent or a Senecio vitalis crested, and they're still pretty hard to find, but it's called a mermaid succulent because it has mer a mermaid-like fan, and each one is unique, each one is different, and has a different growth pattern. I could not believe, I've had my eye out for one of these for years, and I stumbled across it last year, I think, um, for $14.95, because online I see them and they're like 100 something dollars still. And it said mermaid tail, and I was like, is that what I think it is? And it's so cool. It has grown so much for me. One of my fastest growing succulents that I've ever had. And it's definitely a thirsty plant. It's a little dehydrated right now. And so its little leaves are looking puckered. That's the one of the telltale signs with succulents. If you're not sure when to water, when the leaves start to get puckered, it's almost been dry for too long. So this is a pretty thirsty succulent. I give it a good drink. Like when I give my philodendrons a good drink, when it's about fully dry probably not halfway but when it is actually fully dry and it loves a lot of light like succulents do it has this gorgeous blue chalky color so I try not to touch it too much because I'm worried the blue is going to come off but it is the coolest succulent um, and I do recommend kind of looking online because you can see some of the different, maybe I'll find some and post some pictures here for you, but you can actually see some of them really look like fan, just like fans of mermaid tails. They're so, so beautiful and really cool. So if you're into succulents and you like that kind of thing, definitely this one because it's so easy too. Like it's not high maintenance. It's not fussy. Um, I, I, have gotten way better with succulents over the years, um, but some of them can be really tricky. Not this one. It It's like, it enjoys a good drink, it likes light, and it's okay, you know, being neglected other than that. So yeah, the mermaid tail succulent is such a cool one. And right now it's, you know, doing well in this little pot, but I'd love to get a mermaid pot where this can be like the kind of fan tail coming out of the top. So if you're into begonias, you might be interested in this one. And this one is called a Quasimodo or Harmony's Quasimodo. So there's a grower 
and they're called Harmony Begonias. And I think they're based out of Florida, but don't hold me to that. You can find them on Instagram. And they make a lot of different varieties of like cane or angel wing begonias. So they are somewhat uncommon. Um, I got mine from Cactus Club and they may have some available on their website, I'm not sure. Um, but Harmony Begonias have something that's really unique about them, especially the angel wing or cane um, begonias like this one, um, they have silver tips on them. So if you ever see one of these begonias out and about and you see silver tips on each of the leaves, then you know it's a Harmony Begonia. Now the Quasimodo is one of the more um, uncommon ones of her begonias that I have in my collection. And this one, I wanted to get it, but it was expensive. Uh, at Cactus Club, they had a really big one that I was interested in, but it was a hundred and something dollars. And I ended up getting this little one gifted to me from Ivy, who owns Cactus Club. And I, it was so tiny, it was just like a tiny little cutting, and this plant has grown so fast. And I was so excited to see that because like I said, I had really wanted to add it to my collection. And the reason why is because of the shape of the leaves. And again, this is a small plant, so if it was bigger and the leaves were a lot bigger, it would be more impactful. But it has a very unique shape and it has little points kind of all along the, the leaf and it has a little point up here on top. And the nice thing about this begonia is as it gets bigger, the leaves become massive because some of the begonias that I see that are angel wing or cane wing, the, the plant gets big, but the leaves tend to stay about the same size throughout. This one, the leaves actually get really, really big and have like such a gorgeous shape as I keep talking about. And so I definitely think this one's worth it. One, it's been super easy. It's been, it's handled, you know, my type of plant care that I give it. It's unique and, you know, not everyone's gonna have it, which makes it special. I love the like, pinky silvery polka dots on it and the dark dark leaves it has gorgeous purple on the backs of the leaves and i really like that it has actually a green stem because it makes the purple just stand out so so much it's it's really really happy and it's i'm surprised it's so like easy because you know sometimes begonias can be kind of you know not sure but i've had a lot of success with with uh, this plant, it's putting out a new leaf. All of this is new growth. And considering how much I've been traveling and not being able to really like spend a lot of time taking care of it, it's thrived under that care. So definitely recommend it. So if you like Hoya, this next one's for you. It was hard for me to choose because I have added quite a few Hoya to my collection recently. A lot of them are uncommon, but this one has really stood out to me. And it's called a Hoya Globulosa. And it is somewhat uncommon. I think this was one of the only times I've ever seen this plant. In all my years of plant shopping was recently at Cactus Club. I found this one. It wasn't too expensive. It was $32.98. And it is a really, really neat Hoya. First of all, it was the shape of the leaves. I love how long they are. I like the dark green color. I also really like how it has the indentations. If you can see here, it has little indentations on each section of the leaves, but the most interesting part of this plant I haven't even mentioned yet, and that is that it is incredibly fuzzy. So if you like texture on your plant and you like fuzzy stuff, this is such a great, great, great Hoya. But the fuzzy isn't on the front of the leaf, it's actually on the back of the leaves. And in person, you can actually see, it, it's almost like it has like peach fuzz all over the back of the leaf. Yeah, peach fuzz is really the best, best description of it. Um, and it feels so soft and it's just so interesting. Um, but you can't, it doesn't show on camera, unfortunately. I wish it did. But maybe the little one, the new leaf has like a lot of peach fuzz. And Hoya in general are just great plants. They store a lot of water in their leaves so they can be drought tolerant if they need to. I recommend watering them when they're about three quarters to fully dry. Don't leave them dried out for too long, but you know, they can handle some dryness. They don't need a lot of humidity, which is really nice a lot of times um, for those of us that don't have a lot of humidity in our homes. And they're just awesome. There's so many varieties. I love that they bloom. I have quite a few Hoya blooms going pretty much year round, it feels like these days. Just give them some fertilizer during the growing months and they should look, as I'm like sitting here talking, I'm rubbing the leaves 
because <laughs> they're so fuzzy. Like if you're a tactile person, it's fun to have plants that have like that fuzzy, fuzzy. And it's not a delicate plant either. So if you're, you know, touching it, it's not going to damage the leaves or anything like that. But yeah, this is a pretty cool, pretty cool Hoya. If you are a Monstera Adansonii lover, this one is for you. A lot of us love Monstera Adansonii. They have gorgeous fenestrations on the inside of the leaves. And now I'm starting to see some of the variegated versions of Adansonii come out. So this one is a Monstera Adansonii mint and I paid a bit for it, $120 recently. And I probably could have found a better deal somewhere, but honestly, this was the only one I'd seen in person. And uh, I, to me, it was worth it. I'm so in love with it. And I have it under a grow light. It seems to be doing really well. It did, um, some of the old leaves died off, but it has put out new growth since I got it, which is very exciting. And that's part of the reason why it's worth it to me is because the rewarding feeling of the new leaf that comes out. And I'm hoping that it will end up being easy care like my other Adansonii. So here you can see the variegation happening there. Uh, and the new leaf has more variegation than the old leaves. Cause I was a little nervous to get this plant cause I was like, oh, I don't see a lot of variegation. Here's one of the, one of the old leaves and you can kind of see, but the new leaf has pretty good variegation. Now I have not had this plant for that long to be able to say, oh, it's so easy care. And you know, like the rest of the ones I mentioned, but if it's anything like my other Adansonii, I, you know, fingers crossed, it should be pretty good. Cause Adansonii in general are fabulous, fabulous house plants. Um, and I have a friend of mine that has a variegated Adansonii or a mint, mint Adansonii and loves it and it's thriving for her. So, you know, fingers crossed on this one, but so far it has been worth it. And I'm really excited to see what happens. I'm gonna let it grow a little bit more and then maybe I can propagate it a little bit, see if I can, you know, make it into a bushier plant. But yeah, this was, an exciting, exciting purchase for me. So there you have it. Those are 10 uncommon or rare plants that I feel are definitely worth every single penny. Feel free to leave your comments. I'd love to hear what plants you recommend because I'm always on the hunt for new plants. And if you'd like to see future planty videos in your newsfeed, feel free to subscribe. I would absolutely love to have you be part of our community. And we also have a great extension of our community on Instagram and TikTok. All right, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and that I get to see you soon. Bye.